You've performed all over the country. Where, what uh, has uh, been some of the best places you've performed? Some of the best places in terms of oh, well. enjoyment. Um, mm -hmm. Well, the places where go the pieces. Mm -hmm. I like Montre Montreal. Um, I did a piece uh, Twelfth Night in Montreal, mm -hmm. which was set in the Civil War. Right. And I wow. played Feste. Hmm. I come on playing a harmonica at the beginning. And mm -hmm. There was a French guy who wrote a piece on the play, and he didn't see the play. Oh. Scathing, yes, yeah, scathing review, and it was fine. He did not attend the piece. Oh. But he saw, he saw the beginning and he walked out. So okay. there was a big to do with... Um, mm -hmm. What happened to him? What's his name about that? Oh, th 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 he was banned from the theater. And there was a George McCall, was, was a, uh, Gordon McCall was the mm -hmm. artist, the director. He directed the play. And there was a big to do about that because mm -hmm. of that. But I like Montreal. I was there. That was during the ice storm. Really? So I love wow. that. It <laughs> was wow. a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I was there a couple of years, not last year, year huh. before, doing um, Joe Lewis, a new, a new piece. With oh. Uh, with, uh, I've done quite a lot of new pieces when I think about it, mm -hmm. with um, Guy Sprung. Right. Oh, Joe Guy Lewis, Sprung. and I started off mm -hmm. lying in state. Wow. In Caesar's Palace, people come in wondering if I'm dead, mm -hmm. you know, because I wouldn't wouldn't show breathing right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> for half an hour and some 20 minutes before the show <laughs> wow and then go through all the way to the end but it that was a nice piece too it was done in Le Bain which is an old bath mm -hmm. house with a swimming pool hmm. so the stage was set in there so it was like a ring that's and right multi, yeah. multi -project projections and stuff like mm -hmm. that so the people were sitting around it's a nice yeah and when you work like that you you can't fake it right yeah you yeah. can't fake it. Yeah, you've got to deliver. So yeah, and and when you get uh, compliments from your fellow actors, and mm -hmm. you you know you 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 know, so mm -hmm. it so was good. It was very good. Now, of course, there's no way we could speak to you without mentioning, of course, your career in Canadian television and the position that you played in Canadian television. But first, <coughs> before we start, uh, before we talk about your 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 big hit, uh, your big presence in, in Canadian TV. How did you get started? And what, and, and what is it about a plunger that someone wanted to write a piece about it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 1990, 1971, mm -hmm. I came back Austin Clark had written this piece for CBC. It's the one and only piece he'd ever done. Hmm television. <laughs> he wrote this piece and Austin and I had known from 1964 when I first came mm. because it, my father and I were friends. He actually used to visit me in theater school. Really? Drive down with my father. In Montreal, yeah. So. Huh. Anyway, uh, he didn't write it for me. It just so happened that I was there and uh, auditioned and, and got the role. Mm -hmm. It was about a West Indian who came to Canada working in a church house. Mm -hmm. The priest went away, and this guy goes goes in for the weekend, his first job. So he's, he goes and he, he's cleaning up, and, and then he decided to have a party, bring his girlfriend over, and they mm -hmm. bring the boys over and everything. So the next thing, they're playing cards and drinking and everything like that, going through the weekend. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Monday morning, he's, he's got to clean up, right? So he's cleaning up and everything. And he's just going through everything, mm -hmm. vacuuming and throwing stuff down the, the, the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and henceforth the title. <laughs> of course, it overflows. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're having a big uh, meeting, church meeting downstairs and everything. And <laughs> <laughs> toilet overflows. <laughs> okay. Boy, get the plunger. <coughs> Where's the plunger? Plunger. Uh, uh, um, so he said, plunger, plunger, oh yes, he goes and he gets a paper knife, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't okay. know what the plunger is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. 
Yeah, so I did uh, quite a few of those half hour things with CBC in the early days. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that that piece, uh, who you could say it was the be beginning of my um, career in yeah. television and film, because right. it was the first, I did a couple of extras before that, then that came and I got it, starring Arden Bess. Right. Mm -hmm. So then later on, uh, um, after having done Program X and all those, uh, quite a few starring roles. Every mm -hmm. I get. I like, went what were some of the things that you did? Like, so back in those days, the CBC would do like half hour, half hour things. Pieces yeah, just Perfect. based on Canadian scripts. And yeah, okay. yeah, and new things. And one of, one of the pieces I did was um, Happy Ending, written by one of those black guys with Salome Bay and. Um, okay. Um, Is there any Judy way to these? Uh, Julie Drake, okay. Is there, uh, do you CBC, have copy of CBC might have them. I, I probably have a copy or two of some, or a copy okay. somewhere of some of them. Some I still have on the big old. Oh, jeez. I can't transfer them. Hmm. Uh, maybe I could get you to transfer some stuff to me. <laughs> <laughs> you with the technocrat. With this new technology? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. We'll see. But yeah, so, so um, sh they do these things and. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd get a gig here and they get it. So, mm -hmm. uh, I would do commercials too. Mm -hmm. you know, like CNE, one one I enjoyed was riding around King Kensington Market on a bicycle in two and a half hours. It was done. Really? Yeah, just riding around and me saying the spiel and whatnot. It's all right. I enjoyed. It. You could do that stuff, right? Really? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, once I went into CBC because you go in and say hello to Janet or whoever it is and just making sure that they know you're around because mm -hmm. you'd see the casting agents, whoever is in town and let them know. And you didn't have a, an agent. Mm -hmm. Any gig you get, uh, an agent would s send you for the audition if you get the gig. The agent gets his piece, right? right Until right. you get, we had exclusive agents back in 64, 74 it started. Okay. So... One day I went into CBC with my stuff, and then um, uh, the, the secretary says, because uh, I wanted to meet this new casting person. The secretary says, no, mm -hmm. you're, she said, you have to, to mail in any request, and she'll set up an interview. I said, what? She says, yes, that's the new policy. <laughs> Something. Ah, well, uh. Who wants to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm walking yes. out with my thing, and she says, oh, there she is. She's coming. I said, I said oh, sorry, I just came to bring my resume, in, picture and resume. So she says, no, mail it. Mom, you send it in by me. I said, <laughs> I didn't bother. Man, why would you have to mail it in? That's ah, what it sounds I see, Yeah. yeah right. So okay. one day I was on the street and Rene Bonnier, <coughs> director, met me on the street. He says, Arden, I have a piece coming up I want you to do. He said, so I looked at him. He said, no, but you have to come into audition. But you, I'm telling you, you have the role. I, you're playing a janitor, but you re it's a, an essential role, and I need you to do it. Mm -hmm. I said, but he said, no, but you, <laughs> you come in. I'm telling you, you have the role. It's right. the, what the policy is now. You have to come into this. And so, okay. Mm -hmm. After it was done, mm -hmm. now this is the casting, the same casting director, and I'll tell you who she is. It's Diane Polly. Right. Sarah Polly's mom. Yes, yeah, Sarah okay. Polly's mom. Mm -hmm. Who became a great friend after because she was casting. She was casting for King of Kensington. Ah. So she said, uh, when she saw this thing, she said, wait, this guy is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is there anything? She went to check with the people in the library. Do we have anything from him? She said, yeah, we have a lot of stuff here. So, so she went back uh, because she said, Perry told her anything she'd seen, any, just anybody, anything, he mm -hmm. wants to know mm -hmm. so that he could walk, walk them into his show and so on. Mm -hmm. So... She went back and she saw this first thing with Perry and she got some other and she said, okay. She lined it up in, and uh, when he came back from Hollywood, went into the viewing room and started looking at uh, why didn't you lose, use a plunger and some way running through it a few minutes, she, he said, uh, I want him. She said, for which episode? She said, no, I want him in the show. I'm gonna, we're going to write a role for him. Oh, okay. That's how I got it. Nesta, right. Nesta, the jester. Huh. And that was like the first 
regular series for a black man in Canada, regular yeah. as a thing, you know. I Other remember. than that, there used to be dancers and so on. Mm -hmm. People still meet me all over the place, the country, and some people have bets on who I am. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that's oh, yeah. hilarious.